Good evening. The state television company Western Armenia represents the most important events of these days. Today is broadcast. The provinces of Western Armenia are in the forefront of poverty and unemployment. Commemoration ceremony dedicated its 13th anniversary of Randink murder to be held in Constantinople. There are some provinces of Western Armenia banned from organizing rallies, marches, and press conferences. This year, the Republic of Artsakh will celebrate St. Sarkis Day on February 8. Lavash International Day event will be held in Zahkun community of Gelar Kunik. The Los Angeles Times focused on the items preserved from the genocide against Armenians. The Kurdish provinces are the leaders in poverty and unemployment in Western Armenia, where the number of unemployment exceeds 4 million. Poverty and unemployment are a priority in the provinces of Western Armenia, where income and expenditure inequalities are very high. According to the Turkish Institute of Statistics, from 81 provinces Van, Ağır, Muş, Bağış, Hakari, which are densely populated by Armenians, are in the bottom of the list. The reasons are various and embargoes. The prohibition of border trade is one of the reasons for unemployment and poverty increase. A commemoration ceremony dedicated to the 13th anniversary of the murder of a prominent Armenian intellectual, founder of Akos Weekly, Haran Dink, will be held in Constantinople on January 19. Like every year this year, two Dink's relatives will gather in front of the former editorial office of Akos, where an Armenian journalist was shot dead by a Turkish nationalist, Ogyun Samast, on January 19, 2007. The organizers of the commemoration ceremony Dink's Friends Initiative made a call under the slogan It's not late to be ashamed, inviting everyone at 3 p.m. on Sunday at the site of Dink's murder. Events dedicated to Dink's memory will also take place in France, Germany, U.S. and Canada. There is promise of Western Armenia banned from organizing rallies, marches, and press conferences. The Tunjale municipality has issued a statement that the ban will be in effect from January 16 and will end in January 13. The statement also mentions that the ban was set for security reasons as well as to prevent possible terrorist attacks to ensure the safety of residents and the spread of violence. It should be noted that such bans are set in the course of actions aimed to discovering and destroying Kurdistan Workers' Party militants. This year, the Republic of Artsakh will celebrate St. Sarkis Day on February 8. Head of the Department of Culture, Youth Affairs and Tourism of the city of Stepanakert, Karina Harutsunyan, told Artsakh press reporter. According to her, on the initiative of Stepanakert City Hall, a festive event dedicated to St. Sarkis Day will take place on February 8 at 3 p.m. in the park named after Stepan Shaumian. The event will be followed by a blessing ceremony followed by traditional Armenian songs and dances. Salt cookies and sweets will be distributed to young people. A unique confession of love will be held. Other exciting surprises are also expected. In the beginning of August 2020, in Tlachkun community will be held the event Lavash International Day, which will become a traditional festival organized every year with different content programs, reports Armen Press News Agency. In order to make the festival more public and to declare it as the International Day of Lavash, a discussion was held with the governor of Gerhard Kunik. The event also envisages involvement of producers in the region who will be able to sell their own products. Bahet Tarsian and his wife Elke Hartman, living in Berlin, initiated a program of gathering in one place all the items that are linked with Armenians dating back to the years of genocide against Armenians and before it. The Los Angeles Times did not bypass this important initiative. The project started in 2010. Tarsian and Hartman found a vein of material in what were known as Hushamadian, handwritten and self-published memory books that describe the villages and ancestral lands of Armenians who were forced to flee. In 2011, they began posting information from these documents on their website, which they named Hushamatian. Almost as soon as the site launched, they began receiving emails from around the world, written by the descendants of the Armenians offering their own records. He estimates that the Hushamatian project has collected more than 30,000 photographs from across the diaspora. Now let us represent to your attention a song by Darun Tsiner. <laughs> Thank you.
whole version of the song in the official page of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.